Hi guys, I'm Libby and this is my first video. So today I'm going to be talking about my first year at Exeter Law School, um, how I got in and then what to expect and then tips and tricks that I would like to have received. So a little bit of background, I took a gap year and I applied to Manchester, Birmingham, York, Exeter and Leeds and I got unconditionals for four of them because I'd had a gap year, I already had my grades um, and I chose to go to Exeter because it was really nice and it was quite close to home for me, it's only like two hours away. So for all the unis I applied for when I applied, the grade requirement was AAA. I actually got A star in biology, A in English Lit and a B in theatre and I was worried because a lot of people said that you might not be able to get in with a B. Um, because they wanted you get to get consistently A's or be consistent or something but it wasn't a problem for me at all I got unconditionals from four of the unis like I said before when I first got to uni I was really worried that I was going to be one of the only people who was quite a bit older because I'm I think I was I was 19 but I was very nearly 20 when I started but it turned out that there was like half and half probably of the people that I know um half of them took a year out and half of them didn't so it's absolutely fine made lots of friends straight away so that worry was fine but I was really really nervous about going to uni so my first thoughts was that it can be quite overwhelming learning a whole new topic one of the first things I noticed was that we were set loads of reading. We sort of got thrown into the deep end and we just had to keep up with all this reading, had to do a lot of independent study, which is quite different from A-levels, which I didn't mind, it was fine, but it was a little bit overwhelming to start with. Another thing is that it's quite different to anything that I had to study before, you have to think quite critically, but I was looking forward to that because that's the sort of thing that I like anyway. Um, another thing that I was really surprised about was you have to buy textbooks and we have four modules and these are all the books that I had to buy and I have more as well um, that I bought by myself so there's a lot of textbooks these cost just under £300 I think so yeah be prepared for that I don't know if it's the same for every uni but I assume so so for my uni we have four modules which I think will be the same for most unis so we had constitutional law contract law legal foundations and criminal law um, and that's all my textbooks for those. Quite different to anything that I had done before. So at my A-levels, I had done biology, English lit and theatre. Um, so essay writing was handy, but you have to think quite critically and like really critically analyse the law and stuff like that, which was a bit different to anything I'd done before, but it's really interesting to learn. Also, problem questions. You have to do problem questions for contract law and for criminal law. And I think in my uni, it's optional to do them for constitutional law. I found them quite difficult, so we've had formative opportunities, which is not marked, it doesn't go towards your final mark. Um, and I didn't do amazingly on them, so something that I did buy was these books as well. So these are the Law Express ones, which are really good. Um, and they've got loads of questions and they show you how to structure your answers, because I think I was not applying the law but now I know how to with these books, which I'll link down below. And also Law Express is really good for revision, which I'm using now because my exams are in a couple of weeks now. And this just summarizes everything, which is really handy. Now I'm gonna get into some tips that I wish I'd known that I would tell myself now if I could go back. So tip number one would be try not to get too overwhelmed with all the reading that you're set. You're set a silly amount of reading, like pages and pages and pages, and it's not stuff that you've come across before. The way that judges speak can be quite different. It's not like normal writing and it can take a long time to get your head around it. But I say don't get too overwhelmed with it. You will end up falling into a routine, even if it doesn't feel like it at the beginning, because I remember having a day and I was like, I am never gonna be able to do all this reading. I'm never gonna be able to keep up with it. But you do, you just have to keep going and you will get there. So tip number two, building on the first tip, I would say don't get too hung up on the reading. I ended up sort of, once you get used to it, skimming some of the judgments and then looking at the notes at the end and just sort of like looking back through and seeing if you can see any important bits in the judge's judgments or any important bits in the text that you might need to pick out for your notes. But often you'll have covered it in your lectures or you will be covering it in your lecture. But like I say, you will get better at picking out important bits and reading faster. 
Tip number three, which I wish I had known, it might seem a bit stupid and a bit obvious because I feel like a lot of other people did catch on to this, but do the reading after your lectures. So you might have pre-reading set, but once you sort of get into the swing of it, I would say do the reading after the lecture has been set. So then you can just slip in bits. You will have already covered a lot of the content in the reading and the cases. So you can just read in a little bit more depth and slip in any bits that you think are important into the notes that you already have. Whereas what I was doing was making notes and then making my lecture notes underneath. So I've got repeat bits at the very beginning of my notes, which isn't useful at all. And it was a bit of a waste of my time, but it's something that I had to learn what to do. Tip number four, I would say, is keep organised. So something that I did to stop myself getting too overwhelmed was I bought a diary. I formatted this diary with writing my lectures in one side and then I put, um, and then I put bullet points down the other side of to-do lists and then I would put the date next to it so I would know exactly what I had to do by when so I could sort of compartmentalise it and not get too overwhelmed. So this is what I've done for one of them. So that's all the reading that I had to do. And then that is all my lectures. So one with a to-do list, a diary with a to-do list down the side, I found really, really helpful. I would recommend that. Tip number five would be take formative opportunities. I don't know if they call them formatives and summatives at other universities, but a formative is where it gets marked, but it doesn't go towards your final grade. So it's really, really useful, especially when you're learning new techniques for writing essays and for doing problem questions, to hand in formative work and get feedback because I had a formative for constitutional law, which I got 50 in, and then we had a very similar summative following that, but because I'd had feedback from my formative, I then went on to get a first in my summative because I was able to use that feedback in my next one. So they're really, really helpful to know what you're doing wrong when you haven't really done anything before. But yeah, I would say take formative opportunities wherever you can, try and get feedback wherever you can and speak with your law friends and see what they're struggling with, what feedback they got, and it might be something that you, you all got with. So listen to feedback. Feedback is really important, I would say. So my sixth tip is kind of revision based because I'm revising at the moment because I've got my exams in a couple of weeks. And I would say, if you can, make flashcards as you go along, which is what I'm gonna do next year for sure. So if you, so active recall is a really good method of revision. I've seen lots of videos on YouTube of it. Um, so it's basically just like testing yourself and it makes your memory so much better for exams. So it's a really good revision technique. But if you can save the time and make them as you go along and revise as you go along and start remembering the content, then it can help you massively rather than having to do it all at the end of the year. So if, if you can, I would recommend to do that, which is what I'm gonna try and do next year. It might not, I might not be that committed to it, but I'm at least gonna try and do it so it saves me some time at the end of the year to remember and like apply the knowledge. I was thinking I might do a revision video as well, so where we talk about stuff like that in there and anything that I would recommend to do and do differently once I have my results. So tip number seven would be to have fun still. Don't get too overwhelmed, don't do too much work. You still need to make sure that you're going out and having fun. First, it doesn't count towards your final grade, but obviously it's important as a law student if you want to go into law or anything sort of like career wise, you need to be doing well, get a two one in first year so you can get placements for summer um, in second year. So one of the first things they said to, to us was, first year doesn't count, but for law students, for you, it does. You need to get a two one or above if you want to be getting good placements, which I do. So you need to find a balance between going out and having friends and also doing your work. And obviously it's a hard balance to strike, but I would say you do want to have fun. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Put enough pressure on yourself to do well, but you want to be able to have fun. You want to be able to enjoy your first year and look back and not think, oh, I wish I'd had more fun while I could have done. So yeah, there's, there's a balance to strike. Obviously work hard and try your best and try and get those good grades, but don't shut yourself away. You wanna make sure that you're having fun and going to all these fun events and stuff to the extent that you want to be. And tip number eight goes on from that. It would be make sure that you still have time to do the things that you like. Schedule in time to have fun and do things that you want other than socialising and societies linked to law and law and your studies and all of that. I would say make sure you allow yourself time to still do things you enjoy because you still want to have fun and you still want to be a person and it helps you be a well-rounded person for when you're going into interviews and stuff like that. 
and when you're going to look for jobs in the next couple of years for when you're applying to jobs and training contracts and stuff like that you still want to be a well-rounded person and have lots of things that you can talk about other than your studies so that is the end of all of my tips i hope you've enjoyed the video um if you did please give it a like and subscribe to my channel i will be doing more videos soon um all support is greatly appreciated so thank you for so much for watching i'll see you in the next video